What's up everybody, back at it again with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over the most common mistakes or the best tips I can give you when you first buy your RTF kit. So without further ado, let's hop right into the video. So tip number one is gonna be making sure your throttle stick is down. It may seem obvious to some of you guys, but if you're brand new, if you don't have your throttle stick all the way down, Betaflight, which is the program that is on the drone, is gonna think, hey, I have throttle input and I don't wanna arm. I don't wanna take off to the moon. So if you don't have your throttle stick down all the way in the down position, then you're not gonna be able to arm your drone and you're gonna think something is wrong. So make sure to have that throttle stick all the way down before you hit your arm switch. So tip number two is gonna be about the propellers. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the propellers are on correctly. Now our Tiny Hawk kits do come with the propellers on, so they should be correct, but it's always good to check your craft before flight. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure the props are on correctly. And I'll link another video below about the propeller orientation and how to put them on your drone. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure that a clockwise prop is on a clockwise motor and a counterclockwise prop is on a counterclockwise motor. They may look the same at first glance. We give you some extras in the kit, but there are two different propellers. So if you put the wrong one on, you may be having some trouble getting that drone in the air. Now, now, tip number three is going to be when you power the drone on, make sure you set it on a level surface first. You're gonna have the accelerometer and gyro, they're gonna to wanna to do a quick calibration before you take off. So if you're on a surface that's at an angle, you're gonna power up the drone, go to fly, and you're gonna be wondering why is it drifting so hard one way to the other? And that's because you didn't start it on a level surface, so it didn't calibrate level, it calibrated at an angle, whatever angle you set it on. So make sure you're always on a level surface the first time you plug on the drone and you set it down. Now, tip number four is going to be with some of our newer kits, there is a thing called turtle mode or Betaflight likes to call it flip over after crash mode. Now this is controlled by a switch on your transmitter and a lot of our newer kits with the E8 transmitter came with stickers, arrow stickers, showing you what the switches do. And this is gonna be the back left switch on our E8 transmitters. If you have an older model like our Tiny Hawk 2 or our Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle, you may not see this because we don't have it set up in beta flight, so you won't have a flip over after crash mode. But on our newer models, like our Tiny Hawk 3 and our Easy Pilot Pro, we did set it up because we have the extra switches on the E8 transmitter. Now, an easy way to check this if you're arming it and you get no movement from the throttle, if you wiggle the right stick left or right or up and down, or even the yaw, your left stick left and right, you'll see some of the motors will start to move. This is an indication that you are in flip over after crash mode. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and flip that top left switch in the other direction go ahead and cycle your arm switch again, and it should spin up the motors at idle. This is how you know you're not in flip over after crash mode and you can take off safely. Now, tip number five is going to be make sure you are on the same channel as your drone. Goggles and drone have to be on the same channel. Now, both of our goggles, the transporters and the transporters too, they have an auto scan feature, which is nice to use if you don't know what channel your drone's on but sometimes it may be a little bit off and then you're gonna go fly and you're gonna lose video. So what I like to do is manually set my goggles to my drone. So on my OSD, it's gonna tell me what my channel is on the drone, which is an R1, R2, maybe an F1, F2, or you can actually count the blinks of the VTX when you plug in the drone, it's gonna blink a cycle of blue, green, and red. And you can find that in your manual, how to count those blinks to see what channel you're on. So as soon as you figure out what channel your drone's on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the goggles are on the same channel as well. So if you're on R1 with the drone, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're on R1 with the goggles as well. And like I said before, the auto scan feature, it may get you close, but as soon as you go to fly, you might notice, hey, I'm slightly off on my channel. I'm getting really poor video the farther I fly away. So bring it back in, 
double check your channel and make sure you're good to go on that. Now, those are the top five tips that I recommend you check when you get your new RTF kit and make sure those are good to go before you go fly. And it's always a good idea to just check your aircraft over, make sure your battery's charged, make sure the camera's secured, make sure the angle of the camera is not too high for your liking. Things like this are also good tips as well, but I just wanted to list off the top five common either mistakes or tips, whatever you guys would like to call them out there, that I usually see new people message me on customer support of why their aircraft's not flying or it's not flying as it should. And with those tips, this is the end of this video. And if you guys have any suggestions for other videos or you're having problems or anything like that, make sure to put them in the comments below. We'll make sure to do our best to answer those. And if you could hit that subscribe notification bell, that way you're up to date on videos we release on this channel. And with that, happy flying with your new RTF kit. Later guys.